Uh, hi and welcome. Uh, in today's lecture, we are going to talk about metaphysical poetry. Uh, what are uh, the characteristics of metaphysical poetry with particular reference to John Donne? So, first of all, what is metaphysical poetry? Uh, the term metaphysical can be interpreted as meta, beyond and physical nature. It's beyond nature. Uh, metaphysical poetry is actually concerned with the fundamental problems of uh, the nature of the universe and of man's place or function in life. Uh, it actually implies a process of dry reasoning, uh, a speculation about the nature of this universe and the problems of life and death. Metaphysical poetry in the uh, full sense of the term is a poetry which has been inspired by a philosophical conception of the universe and the role that is assigned to human spirit in this great drama of existence. And uh, the ever best example of uh, metaphysical poetry is uh, Dante Alighieri's Divine Comedy. Uh, it is a poem uh, that was uh, shaped uh, out of uh, the best philosophies of the world. Uh, Dante was uh, an Italian poet and a philosopher, great philosopher. Uh, he wrote Divine Comedy in 1321 and uh, it is a poem that was full of uh, historical, philosophical, theological and literary allusions and uh, uh, this poem uh, has been interpreted variously by different critics. And most of the critics, uh, they agree that uh, this poem is an uh, allegorical uh, record of Dante's quest to overcome sin and uh, find God's love. So uh, it was uh, the ever uh, best poetry of metaphysical uh, uh, concept. And uh, it was uh, written during uh, Italian Renaissance. Uh, metaphysical poetry actually uh, was a revolt against uh, Elizabethan poetry. Uh, we know that uh, Elizabethan poetry, in spite of its merit and popularity, uh, suffered from uh, some inherent weaknesses. It was uh, a poetry that was artificial and convention conventional. Uh, John Donne and his contemporaries they did uh, revolt against Elizabethan poets. Uh, uh, John Donne especially, he disliked the Petrarchan convention, the tears of lovers, the cruelty of the mistress, and conceits of the Elizabethan poets. Thus, uh, John Donne uh, was uh, the founder of new type of poetry that was uh, ag uh, against the poetry of Elizabethan uh, writers. As C.S. Lewis uh, asserts uh, that metaphysics in poetry is the fruit of renaissance tree uh, that became overripe and approaching to putrescence. So there is a link uh, between uh, metaphysical and Elizabethan poetry. Uh, so we can say that uh, Elizabethan poetry led to uh, 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 the start of uh, metaphysical poetry and uh, Dryden was the first uh, uh, who used uh, the epithet metaphysical poetry uh, in order to cover the poetic works of uh, uh, John Donne and, uh, and his contemporaries. Uh, Dr. Johnson was uh, the next person who revived this epithet and wrote uh, an essay on metaphysical poets. Uh, in the Middle Ages, we know that poetry was divorced from reasons and thought, but it was written purely for expressing emotions and feelings. Petrarchan influence was a predominating factor uh, during Elizabethan uh, poetry uh, because of the advent of Renaissance. Uh, but uh, Doctor, uh, but uh, John Donne. Uh, lyric poetry is quite reversed to prevailing tradition of Elizabethan uh, age. Uh, as uh, Grierson uh, 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 
uh, he wrote about uh, John Donne that uh, uh, Donne is metaphysical not only in the sense of being uh, erudite and witty, but in the process uh, of his uh, being reflective and philosophical. So uh, John Donne's poetry was full of uh, uh, philosophies and uh, his uh, sense of uh, reflecting uh, about uh, the concept of this universe. Uh, then uh, we'll talk about uh, main aspects of uh, metaphysical poetry. Uh, there are uh, different aspects uh, of metaphysical poetry. Those are uh, considered to be the constituent elements of uh, metaphysical poetry. The first and foremost is conceit. Uh, conceit is uh, uh, an extended metaphor in which writer uh, establishes uh, a comparison between two very dissimilar concepts or objects. So. Uh, this is uh, one of the most important and uh, major uh, qualities uh, upon which the popularity of metaphysical poetry rests. Uh, as a conceit is uh, basically a simile or a metaphor, it's a comparison between two dissimilar things. And uh, Dunn's conceits are metaphysical because they are taken from the extended world of knowledge, science, astrology, astronomy, trade, commerce, and uh, philosophy, and fine arts. Uh, we know that uh, the Elizabethan age was one of the great uh, discoveries uh, and uh, curiosities. Uh, we know uh, during that time period, uh, Columbus uh, discovered America. Uh, Vasco de Gama uh, circumnavigated the Earth, and similarly, Copper explained the solar system. So, uh, many of the images are uh, taken from these geographical discoveries, uh, those uh, took place during Renaissance, and uh, allusions are uh, made uh, towards uh, these uh, uh, geographical discoveries. Uh, for example, uh, in uh, Dunn's poem, Good Morrow, uh, we see uh, different uh, uh, allusions towards uh, the maps, Indies, cartographers, and sea discoverers. Uh, uh, in the same poem, uh, that is Good Morrow, uh, John, uh, John Dunn uses a concept from medieval science uh, that anything whose elements have been blended in proper proportion will remain perfect. For example, uh, he says that whatever dies was not mixed equally. Uh, the most striking conceit occurs uh, when he compares uh, a lover and his beloved to a pair of compasses uh, in uh, his poem uh, A Valediction Forbidding Morning. Uh, John Dunn says, uh, if they be two, they are two so, as stiff twin compasses are two. Thy soul, the fixed foot, makes no show, to move but doth if the other do. Uh, similarly, uh, in his uh, next uh, poem, that is uh, uh, one of uh, his masterpieces, uh, The Flea. Uh, in Flea, uh, a clever, though Obviously, frivolous uh, conceit is implied where the insect is called a marriage bed and marriage temple of lovers because uh, this flea has bitten uh, both uh, the lover and the beloved and sucked their blood. Uh, similarly, uh, in the sun rising, the beloved's bed is the universe and walls are sphere where he says, Shine here to us, and thou art everywhere. This bed, thy center is, these walls, thy sphere. So, uh, conceit uh, 
is uh, considered to be uh, one of the most important features of uh, metaphysical poetry and uh, conceits uh, are actually extended metaphors or comparison between two very dissimilar uh, objects or ideas. Uh, the next important feature is unified sensibility. Uh, <coughs> unified sensibility actually is a fusion of thought and emotion. Grierson uh, points out that uh, the peculiar blend of passion and thought, feeling and uh, ratiocination is uh, the greatest achievement of uh, the metaphysical poets. Uh, it was uh, T.S. Eliot who made uh, the phrase uh, unified sensibility. Uh, according to Eliot, uh, the two faculties of feelings and thinkings uh, came to be disassociated from each other on account of one-sided emphasis placed on the intellectuals or feelings. Such separation is called disassociation of sensibility. But in the early part of 17th century, both were combined, one operation of mind, as it is impossible to feel without thinking or to think without feeling. Then, and his contemporary uh, poets had a unified sensibility in their poetry. Uh, especially uh, in their poetry, there was the direct apprehension of thought or recreation of thought into feeling. For example, uh, in his poem, Valediction, uh, Forbidding Morning, uh, he proves that uh, lover uh, needs not mourning at parting. None can deny the passion in sun rising, but also plenty of argumentation proves that sun has no power over the lovers, as lover knows no season, no, uh, no climate. Similarly, uh, uh, in his poem, uh, The Ecstasy, uh, John Donne uh, transmutes the personal experiences of lovers into an uh, affirmation about man's nature but at the same time emotions are not ignored his poem arises of an emotional situation then he the poet uh, gives reasons to make his attitude acceptable and in this process the conceits are used as instrument so uh, normally John Donne uh, he <coughs> sorry uh, he starts with an emotional situation and uh, there is uh, uh, brimful you know, uh, emotions uh, at the very start and then he resolves the situation and uh, he justifies uh, his stance in order to uh, you know, make his uh, attitude acceptable to the readers. And uh, in the whole exercise, uh, John Donne uses different conceits, uh, different comparisons. So uh, unified sensibility uh, is there uh, in metaphysical poetry, particularly in the poetry of John Donne. Uh, the next important uh, feature of metaphysical poetry is uh, obscurity. Uh, we know that metaphysical poetry is uh, considered highly ambiguous and obscure, due to high intellect and knowledge of the metaphysical poets. Uh, we know that uh, John Donne's obscurity uh, springs from very nature of the poetry. He was writing uh, dramatic, colloquial, unconventional and uh, intellectual uh, analytical. Uh, Dr. Johnson uh, declared about uh, John Donne uh, that uh, John Donne for not being understood would perish, meaning that uh, John Donne's poetry is so ambiguous that uh, uh, it is uh, uh, it is beyond the understanding of common people. So uh, ultimately, uh, it would uh, perish because people uh, would no longer uh, read and understand John uh, Donne's poetry because of uh, ambiguity or obscurity. Uh, in his poetry but uh, uh, 
it wasn't the case because uh, the world was rapidly changing and scientific theories became less complex and vague uh, thus resulting in better understanding of dunn's poetry besides his poetry stimulates mind and it can't be easily enjoyed by lazy mind so uh, though there was obscurity in john dunn's poetry but uh, most of the allusions were made uh, 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 from science and uh, you know geographical uh, discoveries uh, but as uh, the life was not uh, uh, so much uh, complex because uh, due to these uh, uh, discoveries and scientific uh, evolution technological advancement uh, people uh, uh, knew about Uh, these uh, advancement uh, so uh, that's why the uh, those illusions were not uh, wo- vogue for them so now uh, people uh, they understood his poetry and uh, they appreciated uh, his poetry uh, and uh, at the same time it was said that uh, uh, john dunn's poetry uh, stimulated mind and it was not for uh, you know lazy minds rather uh, readers uh, need to be uh, very uh, you know mindful about uh, understanding uh, john dunn's poetry and uh, uh, similarly uh, the next uh, uh, feature of uh, metaphysical poetry is related to the language uh, that is uh, colloquial language uh, colloquial language uh, actually uh, it was the rejection of uh, all conventional and traditional poetic devices we know that uh, john dunn has uh, his contemporaries they rejected all the conventional and t- traditional poetic uh, devices uh, they attempted to use uh, the different vocabulary and imagery uh, which were quite popular among the masses of uh, that time Uh, john dunn even uh, expresses complex emotions uh, by means of simple and colloquial diction uh, thus uh, john dunn revolted against uh, uh, the petrarchan spenserian and pastoral poetry uh, this is uh, especially apparent uh, in the abrupt conversational uh, opening of many of his poems for example Uh, his poem uh, the canonization uh, he uh, at the very start uh, says for god's sake hold your tongue and let me love so this is very abrupt and uh, unconventional uh, starting of a poem similarly uh, in his next poem uh, sun rising uh, uh, he addresses uh, sun and he says busy old fool unruly son so again it's uh, an example of uh, uh, colloquialism uh, and also uh, in his uh, song uh, dan uh, starts his poem go and catch a falling star so these are the expressions uh, of uh, john dan uh, those were based on uh, his colloquial language which was uh, 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 a complete rejection of all conventional and traditional poetic devices of uh, elizabethan especially elizabethan poetry the next uh, important uh, element is uh, dramatic element uh, uh, dramatic elements uh, are very much uh, you know rampant in uh, the poetry of metaphysical uh, metaphysics or especially in the poetry of john dunn uh, if uh, it it is said about john dunn that if dunn dunn had been born uh, some 20 years earlier uh, in elizabethan age he would have been a great dramatist uh, because uh, there are dramatic elements uh, to be found in the poetry of uh, uh, john dunn uh, Uh, and for dramatic element it is very much uh, essential uh, 
to have uh, a conflict uh, that is very necessary so there are uh, conflict going on uh, in uh, most of the poetry of uh, john dun uh, for example uh, uh, the optic stanza uh, uh, he uh, you know john dun uh, he he starts uh, a conflict and then he resolves that uh, conflict later on in this uh, poem for example uh, 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 in his poem, the flea, uh, there is uh, a conflict between uh, the lover and the beloved on the matter of killing flea because uh, flea has bitten both the lover and the beloved, and now uh, uh, there is a conflict that uh, one wants to kill that flea, and the other uh, uh, doesn't allow uh, to kill that flea because uh, that was a marriage temple or marriage bed uh, of both uh, the lover and the beloved so there is a conflict going on uh, in the poem uh, on the matter of uh, killing flea uh, uh, furthermore there is uh, another important uh, characteristic that is uh, diction and uh, uh, versification uh so far as the diction uh, or the vocabulary of metaphysical poetry and uh, versification of metaphysical poetry is concerned uh, there was a uh, there was again a revolt against established elizabethan style we know that uh, in the field of diction and uh, style or Uh, versification uh, john dun and his contemporaries uh, also did uh, uh, revolt against uh, established elizabethan style uh, especially john dun uh, he was uh, a great experimenter uh, especially uh, in his verses uh, Uh, he uses uh, a large number of meter there is irregular meter in his poetry and uh, there are different types of forms so meters are uh, you know uh, used by uh, john dun uh, are not based on a certain uh, you know uh, specific uh, patterns rather there is irregular uh, meter and irregular Uh, types of forms so uh, yeah uh, in the form and uh, uh, the diction or the vocabulary uh, was considered the uh, john dun he did again uh, revolt against uh, those established norms of elizabethan poetry so uh, these were uh, some of the major uh, characteristics of metaphysical poetry and uh, uh, we discussed uh, these characteristics uh, with particular reference to doc uh, to john dun and uh, i hope uh, you understand uh,